Here we're going to look a little bit at reflection, refraction and diffraction and how waves really behave and see how this affects well, what we see in the real world. So first up we have to know a bit about reflection and importantly ray diagrams. So ray diagrams are a way that we show how light travels with a simple arrow. Okay, So say for example in the middle here we've got a surface. We also have a normal line. Now the normal line is just a line that's 90 degrees to the surface at the point where the light hits. Okay, So if we've got a ray of light that comes in here, it's going to hit the surface and reflect off. Okay, Now we always measure the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection relative to this normal line. So the angle of incidence will be this side and the angle of reflection will be this side. Okay, So looking then at a plain mirror the reason we see images in mirrors is because when the light reflects off the mirror all the light reflects back into our eyes and appears to come from the same point okay so for example here we've got an object and our mirror a ray of light is instant on the mirror and reflects off a second ray of light and this happens infinite times okay but all of these rays reflect off and appear to come from some point behind the mirror which is where our image is formed now because the image is formed behind the mirror, we call this image virtual. All right? The rays of light on this side of the mirror don't actually meet and so they're not focused onto one point, but they all appear to come from the image. Okay? And we call this virtual. It's important to point out here the law of reflection. This is something you'll have come across before, but just to reiterate, the law of reflection states that the angle of instance is equal to the angle of reflection. Okay, and this is the same for all surfaces. All right. So if we have, for example, just a piece of white paper, so the surface isn't as smooth or as straight as a plane mirror, the light is going to reflect off it, still using the law of reflection, where the angle of instance is equal to the angle of reflection. However, this time, the light doesn't all appear to come from the same place, and it's scattered everywhere. Okay, So no image is actually formed, because the light goes off in loads of different directions, and doesn't appear to come from the same place. Now refraction describes how light changes direction when it enters an object of a different density to the one it's currently in. Okay, so if you imagine the practical we did in class with a glass block, okay, first of all we're going to draw a normal line on it. Then we've got our ray of light that's instant. Okay, so the instant angle is over here. The ray of light as it enters the glass block, because the glass block is denser than air, is going to slow down. Okay? And as it slows down, it bends towards the normal. So the ref angle of refraction, which is this side, is going to be slightly less than the angle of instance. Now you can think of this using the analogy of a car driving on a smooth road and then going onto mud. Okay. So as the car is driving on a smooth road, it's going at a constant speed, and then it hits the surface or it hits the front of the mud, and slows down a little bit. And so it's going to bend slightly. It's going to veer towards the normal. Now just to show you how this angle changes, we've got our ray box here. If we start off with an angle of instance of zero, you'll notice that the ray of light just goes straight through and the angle of refraction is zero. But as we increase this angle of incidence, the angle of refraction starts to increase. Now you should also notice that on the other side of the glass block, so when the light leaves, the light leaves parallel to the way it entered. That's because as it leaves the glass block, the light can speed up again because it's gone into a less dense object, i.e. air, and travels in the same direction as it enters on the other side of the glass block. All right. The final phenomenon we've got to look at is diffraction. Now diffraction occurs when a wave goes through a gap. Now if the gap is much bigger than the wavelength, so here the wavelength is the distance between these two red lines, if the gap is much bigger than it, nothing really happens. Okay, The wave just carries on travelling through. Okay, it Reflects some, maybe blocks some, but most of it travels through. If the gap is similar to the wavelength, so in the second example, the wave starts to spread out. Now you might have seen this in rock formations in the sea, for example, but it also explains why we can hear through doors, but we can't see round corners. Okay, 